Okay, uh, example 10. We have a car-car collision. Uh, we have a car going 90 kilometers an hour. Uh, that is 1,500 kilograms. And another car, smaller car, 1,000 kilograms, going at 60 kilometers an hour. One's going east and one's going north. And the cars stick together after the collision. We're asking for the velocity of the cars after the collision. So what we do in all these types of problems is, I know there's a nice little cartoon diagram here, but what we need to do is we need to make a drawing showing the two objects just before and just after the collision. Show uh, or choose a coordinate system so that initially one of the cars is traveling along the x or y axes. And in this case, since one's going east and one's going north, and obviously one's going to go along the east axes and one's going to go along the, the north axes or the x and y axes. So let's go ahead and draw that. So I'll, I'll go ahead and draw it now. So over here to the right I've drawn the diagram. So this is car 1, 1500 kilograms going towards the east. So it's really from the west over here and going eastbound. And then there's car 2, the smaller car, moving towards the north. And then they meet here. They collide and this is them sliding afterwards with this final velocity VF and this angle theta. So we're looking for the final velocity and if we're looking for the final velocity we have to have the speed and the angle. Now there are two approaches that you can use. Uh, approach one would be to write out the conservation of momentum in terms of masses and velocities in both the x and y. So you can write something like the momentum initially in the x direction equals the momentum finally in the x direction and you would have mass 1 velocity 1 initially in the x uh, plus mass 2 velocity 2 initially in the x but velocity 2 is completely in the y direction so this term will go to 0 and then you have this completely inelastic collision here because they're stuck together so mass 1 velocity 2 times velocity final in the x direction and so you would put in, and you can leave this in kilometers per hour, that's fine, because it'll be kilometers per hour on this side, kilometers per hour on this side, and it won't make a difference if you change it, back to, change it to meters per second. So you could put in your numbers, 1500 times velocity 1, which is 90, equals uh, 1500 plus 1000, that's 2500. And then for V final x, you could write V final times the cosine of theta. So there's one equation. And then we can get the second equation. I'll write that below that. And we have momentum initially in the y direction. Again, equals momentum finally in the y direction. You have mass 1, velocity 1, initially in the y direction, plus mass 2, velocity 2, initially in the y direction. But this term goes to 0 because this guy is completely horizontal and no vertical velocity. And then this will be equal to mass 1 plus mass 2, times velocity final in the y direction. So if you sub in your numbers, you'll have 1,000 times 60 equals 2,500 times velocity final times the sine of theta. So then you have equation 1 and equation 2. And you could solve it in a similar way that we did the last example. But I want to show you a different way of doing this because um, Remember that momentum is a vector. So what we could do is we could write the conservation of momentum um, in terms of their mass and velocities with vector signs. So it would be appropriate to write m1 v1 initially with a vector sign plus m2 velocity, velocity 2 with a vector sign equals m1 plus m2 velocity final. And I don't always use this approach because I find that if people forget their vector signs, then they make the mistake of thinking this is a 1D head-on collision, and then you're going to get a completely different answer because you're assuming that this 2D problem is 1D. So be careful. This is momentum initially as a vector equals momentum finally as a vector. Okay, so you can visualize this as like a triangle, so which I'll show below here. So then you have the vector sum of the blue car plus the red car's momentum momenta, will give you this final momentum of m1 plus m2 v final. So that's what this statement here is showing, but now in a triangular method. So there's the triangle here. You could calculate this momentum here. That's 1,500 times 90, which is 135,000 
kilograms times kilometers per hour. You could calculate this side. That's 1,000 times 60. That's 60,000 uh, kilograms times meter per second. So in reality, you know this side and this side. And so you could find this side by using Pythagorean theorem. So the momentum of this final momentum, uh, m1 plus m2 v final as a vector, is equal to the square root of 135,000 squared plus 60,000 squared. And so then, and then you could substitute in this mass as well. So v final would ever be with that result divided by the total mass, which is 1,000 plus 1,500, which is 2,500. So that top part reduces to 147732.867. And you can calculate that on your calculator to get v final of 59.1 kilometers per hour. And then how do you get the angle? Well. We want this angle theta, so we can use tan of theta equals opposite, which is this side, that's 60,000, divided by the adjacent, which is 135,000, and that will get you 24.0 degrees. So the final velocity is 59.1 kilometers per hour in the direction 24 degrees north of east. Now, of course, you can go back and do the problem using this method that I've outlined in here. But sometimes it's kind of nice to show number two and, and see it might be a lot easier to solve it that way. Now remember that if you use this triangular method, you need to make sure that you make this statement. It's very important that you realize that you have to tell whoever's grading your paper that I know that the momentum initially and finally vectorally are equal to each other. And if you don't put those vector signs on top of the velocities, then you have written an incorrect statement because you're making the assumption that it's a 1D collision. So be very careful if you do follow the the vectorial method with with triangular or triangles you need to make sure that you show that the, these vector symbols with the component method uh, you don't because everything is along one axis okay so that's example uh, number 10 I believe